Self-reliant space settlements in the solar system beyond Earth have long been the dream and the stated goal of many space advocates. But can a space community be said to truly exist before the first child is born there? Can, for example, Mars ever really be a good place to raise kids? If we want to build permanent self-sustaining communities in space, then they need to be able to sustain themselves, not just in terms of food and air recycling, but in terms of population. And so that goal requires us to be able to figure out whether we even can reproduce successfully in space, produce healthy children and raise healthy children in an environment that they are not at all evolved for. Giving birth in this exotic microgravity environment, what will that fetus develop into? And if that child grows up in a low gravity environment, Clearly, that will have effect on their limb development, muscular development. In a sense, you're really beginning to evolve into another branch of the species. We, Homo sapiens, evolved on the densest planet in the solar system. All of Earth's species are built for relatively strong gravity. We don't yet know the long-term effects of living at lower gravity, but the initial findings are cause for concern. Astronauts living for months in the microgravity of the International Space Station must exercise for up to two and a half hours every day just to stay in good enough shape to function back on Earth. To go deeper into space, for much longer missions, designers plan to spin the crew habitat sections of spacecraft to produce a form of artificial gravity, where down is outward along the axis of rotation. But we don't know if gravity simulated in this way will completely protect space travelers. And it would be very difficult to simulate additional gravity on a planetary surface. Our species was also born on a planet that generates a strong magnetic field. Earth's subterranean dynamo projects a shield out into space, protecting all its life from damaging radiation. Mars, the Moon, and other small worlds are not so lucky. They have little natural defense against the constant barrage of highly charged particles from the Sun, which has, in fact, stripped away much of the atmosphere of Mars. Energetic cosmic rays from exploding supernovas, spinning neutron stars, and jetting black holes throughout the galaxy persistently invade our solar system. Away from Earth, these powerful sources of radiation could be particularly dangerous to developing fetuses and very young children. A lot of the damaging effects of the space environment that we need to protect adults from would be even more harmful for children or for developing fetuses. That includes things like radiation or microgravity. And so we need to figure out whether these are going to harm developing children or whether we need to add additional protections or whether it's impossible. We just don't know. And in fact, the big challenge is that we don't even know how to ethically figure out whether humans can reproduce in space because that kind of scientific research would require us to experiment on pregnant people and fetuses, which is generally considered to be very unethical. We haven't seen children born off planet in no gravity. What would be the effects on kids' bone density? This is when they are taking all those minerals into their bones before 
they get to the point in life where they start leaching them out. There could be some serious health issues for children, but we don't know what they are yet. On planetary bodies like Mars, settlers may be forced to spend much of their time underground or living beneath a substantial defensive buffer of insulation. Some space architects believe that surface dwellings, 3D printed from locally sourced rock cement, could allow natural sunlight through transparent water used as shielding. Because the radiation is less severe at lower angles, windows set behind overhangs might provide views outward across the primitive landscape. But excursions out onto these stark surfaces will need to be kept short and will always be fraught with risk. Is it fair to sentence children to live on a planet they can never experience directly without a pressure suit? Or to grow up on a world they may not be able to leave to come to Earth? Who will get to decide what environmental conditions are permissible for kids? And Piotr Dubrov, outside of uh, the uh, Soyuz capsule, 355 days in space. I wouldn't mind flying some more. Astronauts who spend a long time in space tend to have a lot of physical problems when they come back. In particular, it takes them a while to adjust to Earth's gravity. And so there is a worry that if children are raised in space, they'll never develop the bone and muscle structure that they need to be able to walk around on the surface of the Earth, which could mean that children that are raised in space can never come back to the planet that their species is from. So this is a big ethical question. Would it be wrong to raise children in an environment and take away that birthright, that, that ability to go back to their ancestral home? On the other hand, this is one of those safety concerns that, that could be a mark of tyranny. Do you want to have the state making that decision? Or do you want to leave it up to individual parents or super sad grandparents saying, don't take the kids to space? Here we're talking about one of those zones of privacy, the family, where there's a very strong cultural belief that we should get to make our own decisions about our own children as long as they're not criminal. A lot of people argue that on Earth, parents have to make these kinds of decisions for their children already. Refugees go on extremely dangerous journeys with their children in order to take them to a new place, knowing that they might never be able to return to their parent country. And so humans have been having to make these decisions about their children for generations. The fact that children might not be able to come back and walk in Earth normal gravity is certainly something that any good parent should consider. But also, let us face the fact that we have all sorts of people who are differently abled on Earth. And we do not think that theirs is a life not worth living. We think it can be a good life. So perhaps someone who only lives on the moon could have a good life, even if he or she cannot visit Earth because the gravity is too debilitating. You know, there's often technological fixes where there are needs. And if you go spend time in a weight room or if you're in a space station, go to the, the correct level to get Earth normal gravity for your three hours of exercise a day, maybe we can mitigate against these effects. If, by clever engineering, we can retire these risks, 
Growing up in these challenging new environments could be rich with amazing adventures. Some of these children of the sky may encounter remarkable trials and victories that humans have never before faced. As they grow beyond Earth, future generations may grow beyond human. Whether through biological modifications created by gene editing, or perhaps mechanical and neural implants, or by exogenous augmentations, These progenies of space may proliferate and diversify in ways we cannot now imagine. But will we be mature enough to handle our future differences? Humanity, which has a horrible record of dealing with the other, the in color, ethnicity, whatever, now we're going to add to that people who are coming from the space environments who will indeed be different in some fashion. I don't think any of those are going to be deal breakers or will stop the migration of humanity, but they will be inevitable outgrowths, inevitable collateral effects of humanity migrating into space. So for those who are aspiring to be ethics experts in the realm of space, there will be no shortage of job opportunities I think the ethical question here will be ultimately around individuals that choose to take the step of having the first child and the first children on space habitats. And it is an inevitability. And if we are really going to make a break as a civilization from this earth, there will be people that choose to take that risk and they're willing to build a family in that new environment. We have to do it responsibly, but it's part of this evolutionary process that we're undertaking now.